consider a bank. So you go to bank.com, you type your username, your password, you log in, and everything you do at this point from this point is as you, like it knows who you are. You could look at your transaction history, you could send money, whatever, you do it as yourself. Bank.com knows who you are because when you successfully logged in, it sent you a cookie that establishes your identity on bank.com. Imagine if someone else got a hold of this cookie. Let's talk about that. So what we described just now was called CSRF or cross-site request forgery. It was a massive issue in the early days of the web and it's still around today. How it works is if some other website, say hackers.com, sends a request to bank.com slash send money, the browser would naively be like, oh, bank.com? I know that. By the way, I have a cookie. Let's include that cookie with the request. It includes your cookie that establishes your identity. So when hackers.com sends a request to bank.com slash send money, it sends money on your behalf as you. It literally sends money as it steals your identity. And this is a major issue. And as you can imagine, had some major security issues for the web. How do we mitigate this? How did we solve it? If we think back to 1995, back to when I was two years old, back to when Netscape Navigator 2 was the prevalent browser, we got a safety feature called the same origin policy. And the same origin policy prevents cross-origin resource sharing. So it prevents hackers.com, origin A, sending a request to bank.com, origin B, with certain features. And because it prevents that, it's safe. Everyone was happy, CSRF was down, less identity theft was happening on the web, it was all good. Before we move forward, we need to talk a bit about what an origin is with the same origin policy. An origin is essentially a tuple or triplet consisting of the protocol, the domain name, and the port. So if these two things are equal, then it's considered safe. You can do whatever you want. You can share data, you can share cookies, you can share a bathtub. It's all good, we don't judge. But if one of them is different, if one of the protocol or the domain or the port is different, it's considered a cross-origin request and is treated as unsafe. A lot of stuff isn't sent over the wire. And that's great, it's really, really safe. Except the web evolved. We no longer have just like documents with hyperlinks to other documents. We have rich web apps that are usually full of cross-origin requests. Say like if you're building a music app and you wanna have a search feature, you're probably going to link out to Spotify and ask for search results and then show them in your app. That's a cross-origin request. How can we facilitate a modern web with the same origin policy? This is where we get another safety feature called cores or cross-origin resource sharing. And a lot of developers have trouble with this, but it is a tremendous security feature. More than that, a lot of people say, oh wait, cores just competes with the same origin policy. I say it completes the same origin policy. It allows very granular control of who's allowed to talk to you even across origins. So in this example where you're building a music app and you're reaching out to Spotify search. At this point, before your request even makes it to Spotify, the browser does a request before your intended request, called a pre-flight request, asking Spotify if you can communicate cross-origin with it at all in the first place. At this point, Spotify search can say, hmm, a request from unknown origin. That feels weird, but I'll allow it. It's only search, so I'll allow it. Spotify can allow certain origins, it can allow certain HTTP methods, certain headers, certain cookies, and so on and so forth using cores. And that allows really great control of certain different types of services. Super, super helpful. How it works is using HTTP headers. So if you're not familiar with headers, I talked about it in my content security policy video. I'll link it up here. But essentially, there's headers that start with access control allow. For example, access control allow origin. That says these specific origins are allowed to communicate with me, nothing else. Access control allow credentials. I accept cookies from this origin and so on. So with cross origin requests, you can tightly control who can send you what using cores access control allow headers. 
So if we think back to the example in the beginning, right? If we think about hackers.com sending a request to bank.com, using cores, bank.com can be like, hmm, a request from hackers.com, I don't allow it. Even better, bank.com can say, I only accept cross-origin requests from these hosts that I trust. And bank.com can also say, I only allow cookies cross-origin from these hosts that I trust. So it's very helpful. In fact, using cores, bank.com can just be like, wait, 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 a cross-origin request with cookies. It's definitely a no for me, though. No for me, though. No for me, though. No for me, though. I'm not going to allow it. And you're just safer this way. It's a great safety feature. So you might be thinking, wow, that's awesome. So CSRF isn't an issue anymore, right? Like cross-site request forgery. Just, I mean, it sounds like it's dealt with. No, <laughs> it's still around um, because you need to keep in mind that malicious people are driven by malice. And so if you want to hack, if you really want to hack someone, you can just use an older browser without the safety features if you want to. And then, you know, it's, it's the wild west. You can. So how then do we protect against CSRF? We protect against CSRF using a tried and tested mechanism called a challenge response. And how it works is the server, before anything, the server gives clients or gives websites that it trusts a secret string of text. And this, is, this can be something randomly generated and super hard to guess, kind of like a passphrase. So bank.com, if there's a trusted site, let's say trustedsite.com, bank.com initially says, hey, this is a secret string only for you. Send this to me in any subsequent requests. And then when, you, when trusted site wants to send money, it includes the parameters like how much money to whom and so on. It also adds the secret uh, string back. It says, hey, bank.com, you gave me this because you trust me. Here you go. Let's send the money. And bank.com says, yeah, I did. I gave that to you. Let's send the money. This is great because bank.com can choose not to share a secret string like this with hackers.com. And so when hackers.com tries to do the cross origin request and send money, it's not going to know this random special string. It's not going to be able to guess this what is called an anti-CSRF token. And because of that, it's going to send a request to bank.com. And even if it gets past cores, even so, the anti-CSRF token is not going to make it because it doesn't know what it is. Bank.com never gave it out. It can't even guess it because it's random. Therefore, the send money request from hackers.com will not be allowed and everything is safe. So CSRF is still an issue, but let us appreciate the number of safety features we have on today's web. That's essentially all I have for you. What have I missed? What do you want to hear more about? Let me know in the comments below or at me on Twitter. For now, that's been it. Thanks for watching. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.